Um, excellent. So here we are. We're back. We haven't done this in a really long time. Um, we're working on getting Jeff into yeah. place. <laughs> um, also, now that puts me, oh, all right, well, um, we're also in pandemic. Jeff being good and wearing a mask. I'm not as good, but fully okay. vaccinated and boosted. All boosted. Um, all boosted, ready, go. So I'm gonna see if we can get this. Shall I get that set up? Actually play. We're playing the North v. South uh, by Infogames. Uh, 1989 for the NES, Amiga, Atari, several versions. We're playing the NES version. Clearly, we're emulating it. We're emula emulating it. We don't have this particular game in our archive right now. So, you know, games about the Civil War are a thing. This apparently was developed out of a comic series, uh, The Tunique de Blue, which came out of Belgium. And then uh, the series had 64 volumes and then was made into a game in the late 80s. Um, we're interested to see, though we played a little bit about, uh, a bit, to see how it, um, you know, the replication of the Civil War is a complicated thing. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit complicated. Just a little bit complicated. <laughs> and, and, and in general, Civil War games tend to be problematic in the narrative approach. Um, yeah. In this case, it is essentially just a war simulator mm. um, or a strategic uh, st strategy um, sim uh, with a little bit of kind of first person interactivity in the, in, in the way that we approach the battles. Um, and, um, oops, sorry, it just pauses the game. Um, so if we're bouncing, we're bouncing between OBS. We haven't done this in a long time, so just uh, bear with us as we, as we play through these. Um, so yeah, it's a war sim with a little bit of kind of uh, interactivity in the simulated parts that you'll see in a second. Um, this opening scene, I'm not quite sure what it's trying to get. Um, all right, you've got your bugler in, in the, the clouds, clouds in the blue clouds on top of his horse, who has a really cool mane that. Right, as it, the horse looks down upon. We're not sure. If maybe this <laughs> plays off some of the comic series. Yeah. They do. The, the other, I suppose, interesting thing is to, you know, um, that's the song Dixie in the background, right? Um, so Dixie, um, originally a minstrel song and then was uh, appropriated and used by the South during the war. And so here we have the blue playing. They, they also did take and change the words of Dixie during the war also, but mostly we think of Dixie as situated in the South Confederacy. So, um, you know, the use of this song and the history of this song um, and then the, using it as the intro to this is, is um, an interesting take, an interesting, right? Yeah. Uh, because if you see the lyrics to the song, they're very problematic and rooted in blackface minstrelism of the 1840s and 50s. So I am very, not very well versed in this game. Um, and when you do set up to play, um, clearly you can play player to player. Um, today, oops, that's what I just hit somehow. Um, let me I've back got no out. controls. Yeah, I'm going to back out of that. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that I am level one and that the computer is also level one um, there you go and I think we are here in 1860 oh I just you want to do 1862 I can do 1862 that's fine and it looks like Native Americans are turned on weather is turned on and I think that means that you can resupply or that new troops will eventually show up. Ah, uh, that um, is, yeah. So, and Typical so, representation of a Native American with a war bonnet for... And right now, the computer, the game is playing itself. Um, so let me see if I can back out and, well, you can see it play. I mean, I yeah, suppose John I can just let the... Need to play. I suppose I can let the computer play it. Um, and uh, so this is... Um, this is the battle simulation part, and in this part of the game, the player controls the three uh, troops, um, the cavalry on horseback, uh, the infantrymen uh, that are doing the walking, and then each of the cannons um, are controlled by the player, and you have to cycle kind of between them. Um, 
There the train is going between the stations. If you own two states, you get cash between those states. Those, that cash can be used to buy uh, more troops. So, and, and when we when you start in 1861, it starts with the idea of, well, I suppose as a simulator, they, <laughs> the problem is they want to get each chance, each side. It says each side has an equal chance of winning the war, and so it does play on the idea that each side is um, obviously lacks the history and context of what people were fighting for. Um, I restarted the game so that we can see what see Jeff is talking about here. Um, there's, like most Civil War games, the discussion about slavery and it's in the way it was ingrained in the Civil War and how the Confederacy was fighting to maintain, maintain mm -hmm. slavery um, is completely denuded. It's just seen as a, a war between sort of causes. Uh, the causes are left kind of for your own supposition. There we so go. we'll start it. Um, 1861 and here you can see that we haven't gone far enough to bring Native Americans in or any the weather the weather you know, <laughs> weather's yet so to <laughs> weather has yet to enter the enter into gameplay it um, was a nice April <laughs> yeah <May. laughs> so apparently we can control that well the, the oh, weather is weather there and South there Carolina. are okay so the game is playing itself again I am not sure if this controller is not we had this worked out correctly um, so let me, I'm going to try a different port. Although While the game plays those itself. Are all taken. Maybe I can unplug the, that, plug this in. This is always good to do in the middle of the live stream. Um, so we have that going. Okay, so now I'm going to then. Oh, but now that means I don't have a mouse. All right, so let's see what happens here. So I want player level one. I want computer level one. Oh, I like the difference. The hair? The hair and the difference in the... So apparently you become more suave as you increase your... That's the new way. Light, low. Right, so here he's kind of sweating a little bit. He's got glasses on. He clearly is not ready for uh, what he's about to experience. Is that 1861 again? Okay, yeah. so we're back at 61. Players. All right, so now let's see if we can make this work. Go. Took your photo. Yeah. Matthew Brady there taking photos. The southern states. They don't use Confederate here. No. Um, and they offer this notion that either side can win. I, I suppose at the beginning of a war, any side can win, but the, the idea that you're that you could rewrite history is always one of those kind of really strange parts about a Civil War narrative game. Um, well, particularly right. when it's one about slavery, right? Mm -hmm. And whether you, to give someone the opportunity to, to fight, to, fight continue to continue that. continue slavery, yes. But it, 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 does, it sort of <laughs> absolves itself of that uh, is by not even having it as part of any discussion right. of the game. Or, and it also, right, by, by kind of wiping the Confederacy out and by saying this is North-South right. or by, right, um, you, you kind of, you, you, you're not as player associating with the Confederacy or is that, I mean, some, there's something happening there that, where there's a, a kind of disconnect between the re actual Civil War um, and these kind of imagined civil war simulations or civil war spaces. I think in that sense, it the the imagined civil war here in these games really shows how the lost cause narrative is ingrained in sort of what the war was, and that it's okay to have a war simulator where slavery just becomes um, not an interesting point. You're just playing right. the war, right? You're not playing the cause, right. or the cause has been so divorced or differentiated that it's inconsequential. So, I am, what I'm doing here is a point, I'm sorry, there's a skateboarder outside our office moment, um, but so what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm really, we're, we're moving our troops around, um, trying to consolidate space, 
What is going? Do you see the 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 tropes on the left hand side Here, of the screen? You have Native American trope, and you have uh, the Mexican trope, trope as well. Yes. Um, so if Mexico joins in the war, um, it's it's. <laughs> Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can tell we haven't really played this game much. Um, and it's yeah, like yeah. the uncivilized West, the, yeah. the the frontier of the future. <laughs> it's just sitting <laughs> here waiting to join. Um, so we move him into here, and we'll move him back over, back over here. No. I got it. You have to get the pointer right on the spot. I think the tropes are particularly of interest when we connect the idea that the game has so divorced slavery and the sort of uncivilized nature of it, and and then painting the West as kind of a place of un lack of civilization. Yeah, um, we're fighting for honor, but not something else. Um, was a storm oh, no. He's come into our space. The computer is playing way better than I am right now. Um, and I guess we're going to have to see if we can defend this it's, bit of territory here. The game does a poor job also in many ways. Of, it kind of denotes... It doesn't denote the states that seceded. It only denotes the states that the Confederates controlled. I just killed all of my horse, my cavalry. So this part of the war is not going to go well for us, I don't think. You did well um, last time. All right, so my just oh, lost my. Don't. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, that's trouble. That was not good. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have to start the draft soon. Kentucky, a place that imagines it's itself currently, currently as part of the Confederacy, part of the Confederacy was yes. not originally part of the Confederacy. <laughs> and he's going to try me again. So now This time let's see if we can Ohio. do better. Otherwise, we will have... Ohio looks the same as Kentucky. ...a point here. Uh, well, you're not... Doing well, we're doing okay. I not. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, now we've not, got our. Oh, you're better yeah. off. He's three against one. He's except he's, that he just took out the you bridge. Get the, you so gotta now get the I cannon. Can't get yeah. over the bridge. It's also a loop around. When you go through the screen, you appear on the other side. But you can't put anybody in charge no. of that cannon. Oh, oh coming, the oh, rocks! You didn't. You weren't aware. It wasn't the row. Yeah, but that's okay. Um, mm. It's only the horses that can go up there. Maybe. I want to. I'm, I'm going to trust all three of those guys because Ohio is going to be gone yeah, after we'll, that. Yeah, we'll save Ohio. I'm just going to mean, sit up here and defend this part of the territory. You know where they're coming. Uh, no, that guy. You might have to give it a go. I might have to give it a go to see if we can get. Or no, you'll win three to one. Remember, there's True. A, there seems to be a time on this. See, I, maybe he's yeah. going to res. Oh no, he's firing up. Well, you're brave in the rocks. Oh, it looks you, like we won. We did it. And, um, well, that's nice, isn't it? So they're collecting money still. And we are not. Why are they collecting money? Because. Uh, so the, if you own two territories, um, so in this case, can't see, if you own this territory at the beginning of the line with a flag and that, any of these other points with a flag in your territory. So in the, at the end of the turn, the train goes and you're delivering cash. And the cash means that eventually you can buy more troops. Oh, so, okay. So there's a bit of strategy involved in the game as well. Yeah, so you can buy more troops. Is, uh, here comes right, a ship. Here comes a sh troop ship. I love the graphics on that ship. <laughs> and they're unloading some new troops because he was able to buy troops. <laughs> That seems like a and well, but he went into the to the storm. storm. Um, He's so in now. Virginia. Yeah. So again, um, I only. Oh, this is a turn here, and you haven't fought. Yes. So He's attacking. He's attacking you. us. Yes, and we may be depleted from that last battle. Yes, we are. We're down to just the three. Oh well, yeah, this is so um, this is gonna be. Uh, Fun, exciting little bit of 
warfare. Um, oh, I lost one. Lost another. Oh no! Oh, we didn't get run over. Okay. Oh. Can you make it to um, eighteen sixty-two? No. Oh, now I'm Rambo styling this the Civil War. Um. <laughs> If only you had a cause to fight for. Oh, if only, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it looks like the North has lost the war. Well, <laughs> well what have you done? Defeated by the, oh, his Confederates have been mentioned now in six months. Traitors in your ranks, uh, I wonder who. Um, uh, that was, must have been our traitor. Um, so that was. That was the whole game. Yeah. That is basically so the game. Basically now, oh, so you can turn these off. Um, the United States no longer exists. And All right, so we'll turn that off. Yeah, so now it's a Philip Roth style what if the Confederacy won instead of the Nazis. Um, and slavery is still going to continue in the United States. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not as opposed to counterfactuals as maybe you are. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. I think the problem here is the way the counterfactuals present, present themselves, and you yeah. and you you can be the agent of pursuing that counterfactual right. in the sense of being the Confederates. And in that way, it plays to some of the more toxic toxic part of gaming culture, um, allowing you to play um, for a racist cause um, and right. alongside racism. Um, and which, it, it allows you to then uh, also keep negotiating the idea that the war wasn't about wasn't, slavery, right. that or, it's about states' rights and honor or some other... And that there's still honor fighting that cause. Right, right. Um, which is ridiculous. a fairly ridiculous notion. Um, let's see where they send their guys. But I think that's also part of, you know, when people um, reenact, right? And the reenactment... Uh, I think like a game simulator is also divorced from what what you're simulating, right? Um, it's put in the, the context of just fighting and the war and what that meant for the individual, not mm -hmm. for a larger sort of events. Geopolitical event. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it allows, and, and it really does, I mean, in some ways, you know, thinking about history, right, it divorces you from the historical realities of these these times um, or or this this space um, so this isn't really the Civil War it's just guys um. <laughs> well, wars play I mean that's where wars really afford a space just to play um, a resource game right yeah. and I'm wondering how the game and I haven't looked at the, uh, the mechanics or any uh, the deeper parts of the game, but how resources are allocated, right? If the game is giving equal opportunity for victory, which were not really the cases um, for each side, right. in terms of particularly resources, the both people and industrial output, um, that that's a bit of, um, I mean, that's a historical, and, and not that people are looking for historical accuracies in this. Um, no, and I don't think you sh can right. or should, right? That this is kind of representative of... Oh, jeez, got to get out of there. Um, we are in trouble. But in that sense, it's playing on the idea you can have a war simulator and play with the Civil War itself. And so... Um, I don't think in that sense... Um, you know, it uses these tropes in a sense to authenticate the ideas of the Civil War, but it doesn't really, um, if you wanted an authentic sort of war simulator, then to play the South, you would be handicapped. Yes, and, and as well you should be, um, right? right. Um, and there should be a, a better, I mean, this train is a, is a, is a strange supply line. Um, I, think it, I think it was easier to, <laughs> to manage program. that, yeah. yeah. Um, but this kind of, right, the notion that somehow the 
the railroads extended down into <laughs> the plantation south and the, the or south the had, west like that yeah or, and the south had access to any kind of northern resources or cash um during this period is is a is a strange one that it does i guess put both sides on an equal footing and kind yeah. of presents the war in this this really ahistorical way well you know in that sense by presenting sort of resource management on equal footing um, it gives the idea that the cause is also an equal cause right, right? if not explicitly implicitly right? right this is how the this is the fighting of the war and so and we know we're not looking for accuracy we're not saying this game has to be a s accurate civil war game but the idea is when people play it how then they are consciously or subconsciously consuming right. ideas about the civil war right. is this contributing to the kind of historical memory of the oops now I'm dead um, I mean, it, it, is, how does it contribute to a kind of historical memory how does it how does the interpretation um, especially this is especially true I think in, in many ways for the way that our students approach games and we've talked about this and written about this in other venues um, but this the the notion that if you've grown up playing these games um, and these games present an uncritical history essentially then your historical notions have been at least colored by the gameplay and the way in which they present these spaces so by gamifying this or not gamifying but by cr creating this kind of um, denuded civil war I think in some ways it takes away the seriousness of, of the war itself. Um, I was talking yeah. about Reconstruction just this week uh, with one of our my lower division history courses. Um, and for a lot of them, they don't know what the devastation of the Civil War was. Right? Right. They, they, have, they don't have a, a sense of um, the physical destruction. They don't have a sense of the infrastructural destruction. They don't have a sense of the true violence of, of this war. Right. Um, and I mean, here too, we're we're getting we're not really getting that. It's in, a cartoon. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah, and it, it it that's a good point because um, wars. Then, um, I mean, if you play a game like Valiant Hearts which is very different and you know is in an animated style but presents the war still as being one of loss and is of struggle right so it's not merely sort of the animated effect of it it's how that animation is is used you know when right. you have over 800,000 people die of a population of what 26 27 million right this is totally destructive um, and then the other idea is um, oops I just ran my you know, cavalry the, off the cliff. The idea of the feedback loop again, right? right. The, uh, playing into the historical memory. People, as you mentioned, are colored by the games and, and are informed by the games. Uh, and then people who go and make games are then they themselves, once you played games, who have this sort of informational knowledge about what right. is a good game, right? Or what the history th that we should be presenting in this game is, right? right. And, and it comes without often without research. It comes from that prior knowledge. So rather than stepping in to do some research or I mean and it's becoming a little bit more um, popular to hire consultants and, and to bring especially on, on large games there's whole studios yeah, there's whole studios <laughs> that are doing so um, that are that are talking to game developers and and bringing kind of historic history historical thinking historical methods um, to game development but at the same time these older games especially I mean we can't expect um, this company is this isn't a Dutch company, is it? They're just using the Dutch property or the, um, the, the Dutch IP. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I don't know for yeah. for certain info games, um, but I mean they were using the Belgian book. Right. But I don't. Yeah, it could be. It's didn't look into that. Belgian. I'm book. sure someone knows. Um, I like how we get to the west and. Yeah. We got canyons and bells. canyons and yeah. I'm surprised Monument Valley isn't. Maybe this is the valley. This and I is. can't see the monument. <laughs> John Ford in the background. John's really now trying not 
to let this out? The Confederates win? <laughs> yes, at this, this point, point there's in. a bit more strategizing, realizing he does have a cause, and the cause is to prevent bad, problematic historical memory, <laughs> memory to, to occur. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at this, this oh! point, I really do want that. Three of you guys fell into I the gorge. I saw that three people went into the ditch. Actually, more than three, because... That's but a canyon. it looks like we win, so we won somehow on that one and we get some more troops so every five oh that was theirs they got troops we didn't get any troops on that one um yeah i mean we're in trouble here um i think the south is going to prevail and it seems like i mean i guess so you can you can have it at different right. levels right right um and i and for gameplay that's that's fun right you want to be challenged um oh i did get some new troops, so let's defend our territory. Oh, he skipped right over. He went to Illinois. He's attacking Abe Lincoln's home. Well, with 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 reason, right? We see, if this is that counterfactual, then here he is um, starting the assassination plot early. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, spying on his spying on that. <laughs> maybe Stephen Douglas has some information. Let's see if we can All right, see how we this can is prevail really here. I last know. chance this to is... like do any good. Um, troop allocations are similar. Maybe that just happens in level one. You get the same sort of. We want to get the cannon. Oh, we missed him. Oh, wow. Good sh shooting? Or I had to. accidental? No, that wasn't accidental. That was, <laughs> I saw him coming. <laughs> He's gonna get at least one pop. Can you shot shoot backwards? That. No. Can only go forward. So we got those guys. Come on. There we go. Wow, hey, you really we did okay like on that one. 1863, 62 it's, here. It's our uh, this is our time as the nation steps up. I don't know how many troops I have with this group. If I go here, I, know. I don't think he can get to me yet, so Let's well, see. but this is uh, this is quite a game. Does in 1863 does the Emancipation Proclamation come out? <laughs> well, are we going to get any troops then? I don't know. Um, I'm just curious yeah. how that is dealt with, or if it's just not. I don't think it's even mentioned. I, my guess is it wouldn't even be mentioned. Right? What if um, we if we started 1863? Would it do that, or would it start? Because um, earlier it did mention. I think in eight, when Sean had started earlier in 1862, and it did mention Robert E. Lee um, as kind of the singular individual. And um, oh no, I think a lot of people, you know, Robert E. Lee is often used as kind of a jump. man of honor and strength. You know, he had tremendous so Jeff called skills. this, uh, this call one it? earlier the <laughs> the original Assassin's Creed. Original Assassin's Creed, <laughs> yeah, and Oop. and and you know Robert E. Lee, um, he was the only. He was the only general, I think, in Virginia or the South that um, sided with the Confederacy. Um, specific, not the only general, uh, uh, maybe in Virginia in a particular space. And you know, he was a slave owner and he uh, supported God. slavery. And but he's often, you know, used as a figure that is just discussed in terms of his okay. military genius, right? And and Can't little else. Jump. So Sean's also not very good at Assassin's Creed. <laughs> oh, I'm very good at Assassin's Creed. <laughs> um, there, there you go. go. <laughs> um, I love the pink adobe here. Um, oh, no. So uh, many things trying to kill it's me. It's like for a few dollars more, but... Uh, I don't have knives anymore. I don't have any more weapons, so... Is that clock ticking? Is that what that's doing? Yeah, it must be. And I'm trying... Apparently, I'm trying to get to... To the flag. This the is flag. capture the flag. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I am... Really struggling here. Oh, nice job. Oh, but that, is, oh, so, uh, what is that box? Is that dynamite? That's dynamite. It's going to blow me up if I hit it. And there's, then, a violent there's a cat. violent cat. <laughs> uh, there's only one of is, you. You're, you might not make it. Oh, you're dead. Oh, that's it. I did not oh, no. capture the oh, oh, wait. Oh, you still got still something. Still going. All right. Our last guy, maybe. You're almost there. I'm guessing. I don't, I don't, it seems like you should be almost there. So this is supposed to be the southwest, and you're 
Yeah, I don't know. You're going Rambo. Con this kind of Contra style. Contra. Oh no! Wait, I ran did out you of have time. a seizure? I ran out of time. Apparently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and I got sent backwards. Man. Well. Well, move your um, cartoonish be. avatars. Yeah. Somewhere. Um, I really don't like it there. I mean, what other game? I, again, I haven't played a lot of these simulators from the '80s or '90s war simulators. No. But um, oh man, I got one guy. This is my Rambo man. This is my <laughs> Rambo moment. Can he do it? It's interesting. I mean, I'm talking about slavery, but you know, World War II is often a war that's used a lot in video games. Um, just because it seems to be an easily, for, for maybe game developers, is an easy moral decision, as long as they exclude the atomic bomb. Yeah. Um, and the Civil War seems kind of opposite. Like it's a diff It's not a. It's an easy moral game. Like you should defeat slavery, but it's, it's never approached as such. Like that an sort of easy moral game. It's yeah, never there's... approached as an easy moral game. Um, and that's odd. <laughs> I just did it single-handedly. Wow. That was my Rambo moment, single-handedly taking out the Confederate Army. Wow, then. Well done, Corporal. You have put an end to this bloody war by defeating the South in nine months. It's time for something to make America... What is that saying? It's make America again the land of freedom. Oh. Whoa! Okay. okay. Well... So freedom for who? Wait, what's that song? <laughs> well, they seem to have, like... Southerners standing there watching the army. Apparently, we did it. Well, I'm, um, I'm happy that this time we got <laughs> I was the history able to on point. <laughs> I do feel better. Um, yes, I don't. I, it, it's a much better place to, to leave the game. Yeah, <laughs> like you, you, you well, <laughs> I don't. Yes. I think for some reason it has decided to start. Um, a good person would <laughs> want to end with the yes. Union winning. <laughs> Go to 1863 real quick. Uh, me, we don't uh, need to do this too much longer, but... It, uh, no, if, I mean, at some level, there's just not a lot to say about this game. Um, no. My con controller, controller stopped working again. It's being flaky. Um, is it a fun game? Uh, if we had to divorce it of all sort of problematic hmm. historical instances. I'm... No, basically, I'm not going that it's a fun game but it might be for somebody else I I am not um, a fan of war sims and in terms of you know doing American history and being an American historian um, the Civil War isn't one of those, those things that I'm I have ever really been that interested in in its it's 1861 again it, is it 61 again it's mm. not reading it sometimes All right. right yeah. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I, then that doesn't seem to. I uh, just. <laughs> 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 Nor am I very very good at this whole retro arch thing. Um, so I'm sure there's something that I'm missing here. Um, so so for me, this is just it's not a, um, a subject that I would normally kind of gravitate to to play, and I can't change things um, to play. Uh, and and we've done it before with Dr. Dable. Um, oh right. Where yeah. we were playing the History Channel's Civil War game, um, another game that completely uh, denudes the uh, war of any real meaning. Um, and uh, why did I just do that? Oh, yeah, eighteen six. No, I'm still. I still got other things I need to plug in here. This is uh, me struggling with technology, or not struggling well, with not technology. Struggling, but but we, uh, <laughs> we just did a quick setup here to get it going. And we are back in our offices for the first time in two years. Uh, there we go. Now something happened there. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to see if I can restart the game. Um, uh, yeah, so this is this is a, this is a little rough, uh, but um, we wanted to kind of start playing um, primarily just to, for one of our games classes to give students an opportunity to kind of see us play through a game. Um, whether this one has been valuable or not, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> but well, I, I mean, 
it's something. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. there's things to think about that to say. Like, yeah, like that purple, gray. And I think a, an important point to think about when looking at a game is to think of not you know we're not the accurate is not looking at accuracy, but thinking about what's the point of the game. Like yeah. what if if there's an argument, even though that argument might be implicit, what is the argument? And it seems that this one that there's there's a, oh, both sides are equal, right? Yeah. There's other than that, you know, that may not be what their intent was, but um, right. So this is last year seeing the South gaining. Lee knows that in the long run, the North's industrial might will vanquish. Um, he needs to decide. I mean, so there you have, but no mention of of any of the Emancipation Proclamation. No man, uh, you know, or any discussion or, about. Yeah. what's going on, what's happening with uh, um, the enslaved. Right, and I think that's, but, but again, that fits, that's, in... that fits with the kind of narrative that they're expressed, that, that they're right. telling, and it also, I mean, I think there's a, that would be, a, had, had been a fairly heavy expectation for a game in the late 80s. To do that, um, to do any, yeah, to, to, to make any kind of recognition of an enslaved population. Um, I mean, Roots was monumental and on TV in the late '70s, yeah. but by the Reagan '80s, we kind of revert back to these kind of cartoonish versions of the war. And I think when Glory comes out in the, 90s. in the mid 90s yeah. right and yeah. so that's Shaw's rebel or Shaw's uh, black troops into yeah the Massachusetts yeah. Um, and I think that's for for a lot of outside of like roots um, but f- uh, you know for a lot of people that would have been their first introduction to notions that there were black um, or formerly enslaved um, troops uh, fighting um, alongside or for uh, the northern cause um, so and, you know and, and yeah I, I guess you know I, sometimes I think we expect and I'm not ex- I don't think I'm making excuses for the games but I think sometimes we need to think about them kind of at the con- in the context that they're made they're, that they're made right in the moment that they're made um, and like the Vietnam War games sure that, you know we've talked about before and played um, those are about right a, a moment in time more than they are about the Vietnam War. Um, Commando is more about kind of masculinity than it is a, a war game that you're that you're playing. Um, and I and, and I wonder yeah. if a game like this isn't really about the Civil War. It isn't about um, it, but I think as we talk about it, when you play it, you're still thinking Civil War, so there's an impact. Yeah. I almost think of the idea you brought up, like these games that we're playing and we have kind of on our on our spreadsheets, um, they're all 80s games, yeah. right? And so all of them are going to be situated within that same historical moment um, in terms of, of how they're expressing, purposefully or not, sort of political sentiments or social sentiments. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, if it tells us something about the '80s and the ideas of the Civil War, I think it's still something that you know, people imagine the Civil War is, you know, divorced from larger meanings. Meaning. Yeah, no, I, and right. no, the Civil War was is, I think, still being presented as that moment. This is a weird thing, to me at least, in, in the way that the Civil War has always been presented, right? Whether it's a kind of lost cause narrative um, that comes out, out of Reconstruction, um, or whether it's just the way we've kind of dealt with it as a nation throughout our history, right? It's, it's always been this thing that is, it's both contested, but it's also at the same time kind of ignored, um, yeah. right? It's, it's, it, it's, it's that devastating moment it's that watershed moment um and i know the civil war historians are like just shitting all over my this right now um but it's it's also that time um where for especially in, when we get into the 70s and 80s we've kind of gone well beyond it as something that was a critical part of the narrative culture right um we instead I mean, especially you know, with thinking about this time period, you, 
you know, the bicentennial has, isn't that far off. Um, and so the Revolutionary War kind of came back into public imagination in the 70s and early 80s. Um, and I think we kind of refought that war. We, we have the Vietnam War that we're reconciling with at that point. And I'm not sure that um, anybody really gave much thought back to the Civil War, except for maybe um, Recon, um, the guys that run around in uniforms and play. The, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose it's uh, in some ways, I mean, difficult for some to discuss it within the framework of it being ensconced in slavery. Um, yeah, I will, you know, popular culture and in, in the way it's expressed in games like this, though, um, I think kind of reinforced that. Yeah, idea that it that it's worth ignoring or yeah. that it is it's a simple a fact. simple yeah you know just fact of I just shot a cannonball nice uh, That's <laughs> impressive. Um, yeah and I, I, yeah maybe that's it is that you know that that the way that popular culture had been presenting the war is that it's it's not worth in some ways not worth remembering um, because. Or it's not uh, worth it's, digging into. It's, yeah, because it's, yeah, because to do to dig into it would, would mean to recognize mean to recognize and reconcile with race. And let's be honest. I mean, the Civil War was never really reconciled. No, nor was it. <laughs> nor would you know? And you still have people who would argue the point that it wasn't about slavery. Right. Um, and that the flag has some other meaning. Yes. The, um, somebody's family's heritage. Right. And, uh, heritage yeah. is a code word for not wanting to recognize the institutional nature of racism. Of racism. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In a game yeah. much like this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, which but I reinforces think, those. I ideas. think that's what's maybe, and we've gone in a circle here, maybe, yeah. but maybe that's important when we look at these games, right? Uh, of, of talking about um, what they are and aren't doing. Right regardless of them being accurate or being fun or, or whatever, um, they are moments of a period of popular culture that spoke to how people maybe not purposely understood or looked at a period, right? No one's playing this game and thinking this is accurate. I talk to my students all the time, like we're not talking about that. And right. I think people who do game studies know that, um, but the, the moment it came out of, the way a culture remembers these things mm -hmm. and how these things then inform people's historical memory um, are relevant. Oh yeah, well, I mean, with, without a doubt, and yeah, and yeah. and I'm still grappling with this that notion or that idea that um, in, in in some ways I think these games exist in o order to bolster that kind of lost cause narrative. Um, that there's a that there's a comfort in the idea that maybe the South could actually prevail in a um, you know in this in this situation um, where it just did there. <laughs> <laughs> I took out my one troop, um, and that that for those who of a certain ilk that that there's a comfort in that that you can still fight this right this battle and that. There's a possibility that it, they that can still win, and yeah, you don't have to you don't have to argue. You just have to fight. Right, you just have to fight. You yeah, the, the moral causes are gone once right. you don't have to argue. And yeah, and I, I mean, I've, there, there's other Civil War Sims, and there's a one that is on Steam right now um, that's a pretty like gruesome RTS. Um, Civil War game, um, and if you look at the forums there, they're just filled with a variety. Of, there's a lot of vitriol and a lot of anger at you know the way that the South is being portrayed, or um, and and it comes down right. I mean, ultimately, if anybody does is critical and, and mentions slavery or does or tries to realign the history with with the gameplay. What you end up with is just getting completely 
um, derailed with conversations about authenticity, conversations about right. weapons, conversations say, yeah. about right. the buttons on somebody's uniform. That becomes the performance and that's, part. Yeah, yeah, and that's what that's the history, right? That's that's the historical ob object. Right. Um, it's not the war. It's not a critical analysis of the reasons for the war. It's not right the way that the war was conducted. It's instead. It is all about the way that things look and feel. It's he was a colonel, not right. a lieutenant colonel. Exactly. Don't you know? <laughs> don't get don't get your women in my civil war um, right. kind of argument that just that you know is it creates a false narrative in in so many ways, um, and one that's not worth actually even exploring um, if we're being honest. Right. Um, right, because that's not those those aspects uh, aren't important. Um, but they become important to the players who then expect those things, right. right? And when they don't get the things that they expect, that's when you get those those yeah. forums, right? Um, which really speaks more to um, it. Really isn't it? It <laughs> the war has no meaning because if the war is merely about how it looks and feels, um, the argument, the meaning goes away. Right. You don't have to. You don't have, well, because you don't have to analyze it. You don't have to think about it, right? It's just about you know, uniform color or, and yeah, and that just becomes, it's hard to think and play at the same time. That, and that, that's really <laughs> where where um, reenactors seem to be. Right. I don't know enough about that. Either do I, and so I, I don't, don't want to. I don't want to disparage anybody for yeah. that, that kind of a hobby. But it seems to be the same kind of idea as, as well, right? Um, there, I won the Civil War again. You did it again. I have won the Civil War yeah. twice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm not sure who those shadow figures are. Those I'm not even sure the other people are. Back. Just... Those are the, that's the real people of, of America. Um, Forget that. <laughs> look at the top hats. and right, Those are the people who didn't go fight. Uh, <laughs> Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I think we we have done enough yeah. damage um, to the north, no, and to the south, mostly the south, <laughs> yeah. which is fine. Uh, uh, but we're going to try to do this a little bit more frequently. Um, maybe not always NES games, because um, these are these do become um, iterative a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's really not a ton to say. And part of that is, I mean, there's an implied narrative here. Um, that the game that the games present, but they they aren't these weren't sophisticated narratively enough to really um, provide a, a text that is you know well it's legible but it, or, and and one that can you can be crea critical of but I don't think you can spend too much time um, with this <laughs> just. I'm oh, we that. can. I, we could, yeah. I mean, we just, <laughs> I think we just did spent an hour doing it. Um, so <laughs> I guess we can um, <laughs> do that. Uh, 45 minutes, so. Um, All right. Cool. That's a good time. Yep, that's a good time. Thanks for anybody who watches this, either not live, because nobody's here, um, or on YouTube. See you in the future. Yeah.